Welcome back to TechFlick. We are going to do an overview on this power supply and also I'll go through my build experience with it. Shall we? Alright, first off, this power supply comes in at 118 Singapore dollars, equivalent to roughly 85 US dollars. It's 160mm in length, 150mm in width, and a height of 86mm. So let's take a look at what's included inside. We have the power cable with European plug. I stay in Singapore, so this is quite standard. Four screws to mount the power supply to the case. A user guide manual. A bunch of cables in a pack. We're going to take a good look at them later on. And of course, the power supply itself. Pretty simple and basic packaging overall, and it's neatly packed in the box. Okay, so for the bunch of cables itself, the package includes one 24-pin motherboard cable, one CPU cable, two PCIe cable, two SATA cable, two peripheral cable, and one cable comes with four-pin FDD connectors. So something to take note of is that there are plenty of versions to this power supply, so your version may receive slightly different type of plugs or cables. The cables are all flat black cables, and I really do like this type of cables. The motherboard cable comes in this braided sleeve, kind of make it look really rigid and durable. Taking a look at the power supply itself, it comes in this all black look with the Cooler Master branding in the middle in silver. The 120mm Silencio fans which is included for intake for silent cooling. This fan is loop dynamic bearing or LDB for longer lifetime cooling. Looking at the sides here, we have more information on the AC input, DC output and total power and also a display of certifications. One of them is the 80 plus gold certification. You can be sure that this power supply is tested with a typical efficiency of 90%. On the back, we have the power on and off switch, 3-pin connector for the power cable and a ventilated grill for airflow. On the other side, we can see this Cooler Master design displaying the logo and the model name. I appreciate Cooler Master keeping this design simple in black and white. If you have a case with a cutout in the power supply shroud, this design will not look out of place. Look at the top, it's nothing and it's clean. On the other hand, since this is a fully modular power supply, the front side is where you can connect your cables. The labels below the connectors are clearly marked so you know which cable goes where. Oh, and some of the cables are also labeled. In this case, the CMPSU N goes to the power supply while the CPU label N goes to your motherboard. This CPU cable also comes with two EPS connector. So if you have a motherboard like the MSI Z390 Tomahawk, which comes with an additional 4-pin CPU connector, simply separate the connector in two and you can use the extra 4-pin. The pros of a fully modular power supply is that you get to choose which cables you need and which you don't. It's also easy to identify which cables goes where when connecting to the power supply, thanks to the label. Once the cables are in, you should feel a click. So how does it feel to build with this power supply? Starting with the installation of the power supply, it fits in the case nicely and using the included screws, there was no issue installing the power supply. When connecting the motherboard cable, I found that it was quite rigid that I had to bend it with a bit of a force. Here you can see me trying to bend it while connecting to it. But once it's in place, it clicks in nicely. The same rigidness is also present in the CPU cable and I also had to bend it with a bit of a force at the right angle to connect it to the motherboard. Since a single SATA cable has four connectors, I just had to use one cable. And I was able to connect both my hard drive and also my SSD. Connecting the PCIe cable to the graphics card was also easy. I had no issue connecting to the RTX 2070 Super which requires a 8 plus 6 pin connector. As the PCIe cable are pretty rigid, there was a bit of pressure when I placed the tempered glass back. Nothing to be worried about, just something to take note of. Of course, I was able to close the tempered glass afterwards. Due to the cables being flat in the first place, it was easy for cable management too. All the cables can fit in nicely under the shroud and I can close the back panel with ease. Being 80 plus gold certified and it comes with the silencio fan for increased longevity, 
I have a feeling that this power supply is going to be reliable for years to come. Also with it being fully modular, it does help in cable management and airflow and in turn better thermal performance. It also comes in black flat cables which is a bonus. Overall, I think this is a great package for a power supply and I'm betting it will last long. That's it guys for this power supply overview and build experience. If you like what you see, click the like button. If you love what you see, subscribe and leave a comment down below. This is Techflick. Signing out.